All right, welcome to the College of Complexes. My name's Tim. I'll be the one presenting tonight for uh, Obama's third term. There are two rules to the college here. First is one fool at a time. The second is no personal attacks. The College of the Complexes consists of the following format. First, we'll have a uh, brief announcements period, followed by uh, a, uh, the main speech by me. Then we'll have questions and answers, and then we'll have our infamous rebuttal period. Sort of a light turnout here at Dappers, but I'm glad to see everybody on Zoom tonight. So with that, we'll get started. And uh, hang on, Charlie, while I get the uh, browser up here for the uh, college, and we'll be all set. Um, all right, hang on. All right, Charlie, let's get started with the announcements. All right. Welcome to meeting number 3,743 of the College of Complexes, the playground for people who think. Um, as usual, I will give an advertisement. Uh, we have a meetup email group and a Google group. So you recommended that you sign up for either one of them in order to get updates on upcoming programs. Very little traffic, one or two per week, so you know what the hot topic is of that week. Uh, sign up, very easy, center top of our web page. And now, although I am not a capitalist, I will give an advertisement for our upcoming programs. Um, next week on December the 2nd, uh, Sharon Waller, a candidate for the Water Metropolitan Water Reclamation District. We're talking about ecological, she's an environmental scientist, engineer, uh, candidate uh, for the March primary. Uh, so it'll be ecological issues will be the topic and we'll see what she has to say regarding her campaign. Following that, we've got Andy Anderson returning. We just saw Andy. Uh, he's going to be giving us an update on censored news, censorship of the media. Uh, they're trying to keep us from the truth. Um, but he's got the most uh, censored news stories he's looking at uh, of the past year. So that should be a good program. Um, after that, yours truly, I'm going to be presenting my version of the Green New Deal. Uh, I've looked at all the others. I even give programs on the GND, so that girl. Um, but I've got my own. It's got some unique features. It doesn't require government <clears throat> regulation or any changes in our lifestyles in order to save the planet. I've got Chuck's plan is the one, if you're looking for a Green New Deal, Chuck's plan is the one you will want. Don't miss it. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to take a break with the holidays uh, on December 23rd and the 30th. Uh, so happy holidays, everyone, uh, uh, for the holidays of uh, materialism. <laughs> we'll be returning. I'm. This is a work in progress, but I'm looking possibly to put together a program our, our anniversary is on January the 6th, 1951. I'm put, thinking of putting together a program uh, of uh, on the history of the college complexes. And we may invite some, everyone to speak on what they thought were their most memorable moments. So January the 6th, I'm, it's a work in progress. So uh, think about that. Uh, we Let's see, following that, um, on January the 13th, Dr. Mike Grouse uh, of the Center for Pluralism will be talking about the situation in um, uh, Palestine and Israel. That's on the 13th. Now, January 20th is open at the moment. And on January 27th, um, Kathy Powers We'll be talking about a very important uh, topic 
uh, accessibility mm -hmm. for the handicap around Chicago, and in particular on public transportation. And there's all kinds of links provided there so you can look into this important topic. We have a couple dates open in February. If you would like to speak, as I say, we have January 20th open and a couple dates in February. Okay, Tim, thank you very much. All right. Take it away. Okay, hang on. All right, uh, welcome everybody to the College of Complexes tonight. Like I said, I do know there's a light turnout at Dappers, but we also have a good uh, turnout on Zoom. Now, we're going to talk about Obama's third term. This speech was largely inspired by my father, who has passed away about a year and a half ago. And what he did was he, uh, when Biden came into office, and with some of the policies and procedures that Biden was doing, he often said, it's Obama's third term. Robert Urban also wrote a book about having an, uh, trying to extend the 24th Amendment to get in there. And there was a resolution back in 2013 that talked about um, trying to extend the presidential terms. But uh, we'll see where it goes tonight. So I'm going to get started with the speech now as soon as I can get my PowerPoint up. And uh, with me, please, I'll get it going here. But um, I got to get the everything working here, so bear with me, please. Okay, there we go. There, it's it's going to take a second to pull up while well, you guys can see me, but uh, as stated, in a lot of ways, Obama's third term is just like um, what happened in Obama. And uh, we'll get started here in just a second. As I get the uh, share screen up. A second here, please. Okay. Okay. Slideshow. The beginning. Okay. All right. On for the, there's a resolution for how the House of Representatives, was AKA the Twenty Second Amendment. In a book written by Robert Urban, he outlines how powerful forces are conspiring a path to Obama's third term, how it can happen, and how it may be happening with many Biden's cabinet members, the former Obama appointees. And how will this affect John o. J. Trump? Well, let's find out. As soon as I get this to go advance. He wants a forever term. All right. Um, no person shall be elected. Uh, did I just miss one? Yeah, I just missed one. You got interference. What is it? You have interference with someone talking over you. Okay, I'm going to have to get this. Uh, give me a minute, please. Can you please, can everybody please mute on Zoom? Yes. All right. All right. Thank you. It's gonna be a little bit harder to uh to get everything going tonight when I work with all the stuff going on. So bear with me, please. Okay. No person shall be elected to the president of the office of president more than twice. And no person who for more than two years of a term which for some other person was elected president shall be elected to the office of president more than once. But this article, give me a minute, please. Somebody's still. Oh, God. I'm sorry, guys. We got to get everybody muted here. Okay. Well, uh, all right. My apologies, please. I had to get everybody unmuted. All right. Uh, can everybody hear me now? Just wave your hand. All right, good. Anyway, this article shall not apply to any person holding the office of president when this article was proposed by Congress. The act 
and shall not prevent any person who may be holding the office for president or acting as president during the term within the article becomes operative from holding the office of president or as acting as president during the remainder of such term. Gary, will you please mute? It's not you, it's better with your idea. Gary, will you please? Just a minute. Since the horrendous attacks by Hamas on October 7th here in Israel, we've been in touch. God damn it, come on. All right, we got him muted now. Sorry about that. All right, Obama's third term. Follow President, in a book written by Robert Urban, it was the following President Obama's secret path to a third term explores the cycles. <laughs> Of economic, will you? You can mute everybody. Can't you mute everybody? Oh, 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 everybody. Gary, I'm going to mute you again, so just hang on, please. Keep interfering with the speech. Oh, it. Come on. There we go. My apologies again, please. All right. Barack Obama's first term as president lasted from 29 to 2013. During this time, he implemented measures to address the sublime mortgage crisis and the Great Recession. Since leaving office, Obama has remained active in democratic politics and he has campaigned for various candidates in elections and including his former vice president. Urban's book, however, is outdated since it was published back in 2013. And the analysis that I consider is somewhat outdated on the thing being over 10 years old. When I read the book, it just didn't seem to cut it because, you know, the 24th Amendment is going to be hard to amend. But there were a lot of many people who wanted him in as a third term. It is my contention, however, that in reality, it is Obama's third term. By the election of former VP Joe Biden to the presidency of the United States. It is also my contention that this is one of the best things to happen since Obama's policies were more middle mainstream and Biden had brought, has brought the country to prosperity. There's a number of current members who have served with Obama. I'll just name a few of them who can help you out. The first one was Lloyd Austin. He was nominated as Secretary of Defense by Biden. He served as the commander of the United States Central Command under former President Barack Obama. Alejandro Mayorkas, was tapped as a secretary for Homeland Security, a department he served in during the Obama years. Dennis McDonald served as a White House chief of staff during Obama's second term and has been nominated as Biden Secretary of Veterans Affairs. Avril Haines, expected to serve as a national director of national intelligence in the new cabinet. She was previously the director of the National Security Agency under Obama and the first woman to be director of the CIA. Linda Thomas Greenfield, she elected as the US ambassador to the United Nations in Biden's cabinet. In the Obama administration, Thomas Greenfield has served as a secretary of state for African affairs. Cecilia Roos, a member of Obama's Council on Economic Advisors has been nominated to chair the council under the new administration. Of course, John Kerry, former secretary of state under Obama, will serve as the inaugural special presidential envoy for climate, a cabinet issue position with authority over energy policy and climate issues. Tom Vilasek, expected to resume his previous role as agriculture secretary in the incoming administration. Of course, sorry, we also have Ron Klain, set to serve as chief of staff again. However, come November, Lane will be the White House chief of staff. 
rather than the chief of staff that the vice president are all serving both Biden and uh, during Obama presidency. state. During Bill Clinton's president, excuse me a minute, please. I'm having, sorry guys, I'm a little tired. Um, Andy, can you give me one of those uh, stool, stools or something? Uh, that thing in the back. Um, Anthony Blinken was nominated as Secretary of State, previously served as a Deputy Assistant to the Secretary. Uh, tell you what, Andy, can we get this, uh, remove this? I'm having some trouble. Just, just to remove the podium, please. I, I got a little bit of, I got some uh, things to take care of here. I'm sorry, I'm just having a lot of trouble. You want to move, move, the, move the podium. Stick the whole podium. Okay. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, move it back here. Okay. Then move the camera down so they can see me there, please. Sorry about this, guys. Oh, thank God. Hang on, I'm going to get there. That should be pretty good. Down just a little bit further, Andy. Okay. How's that? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Good. What's, I'm sorry, what got into me today? And where's that? Where's that mouse? This is going not going good tonight for apologize everybody. Too goddamn cold. Okay, but anyway, we got a few more names here. Well, oh, here it is. All right, are you still I there? Can't find my speakers. We're still having trouble. My apologies again, please. Okay, we'll go back to the current screen. Mm -hmm. uh, there are several areas of policy continuity between the Obama and Biden administrations. First off was foreign policy. Both administrations have been involved in interventions in Libya and Syria, support for the Saudi war in Yemen and drone warfare. There's also been several correlations between uh, immigration policy and many other items. Artificial intelligence, President Barack Obama. No, I know Barack it, is, but Obama. I can't, uh, there I am, but I can't hear it. Oh, here's the speakers that came back. All right, can, Michael, can, I muted you, so can you hear me now? National Airport tonight, George. How's it looking so far? Can you hear me, Michael? Yes. Okay, I'm going to mute you now, all right? You can unmute after the presentation because it's causing a little bit of interference on Zoom. All right. Now, President, and, and, and the area of artificial intelligence. President Barack, former President Barack Obama helped draft the new White House artificial intelligence policy that President Joe Biden rolled out. Of course, we also had staff continuity. Many of the staff members in the Biden administration also served in the Obama administration, which can lead to policy continuity. There was also a close personal relationship between Obama and Biden developed during their time in the White House together that they served during their presidency. Personally, I like Obama. Under Clinton, we actually had a surplus and a plan for Middle East peace. And of course, the rollout of the internet and uh, was largely a commercial success under uh, President Obama, despite what the conservative miscreants uh, made in this whole thing. 
Um, going further, under Bush, at the end of his two terms, we had two wars and an economic recession of such horrible consequences, plus the Department of Homeland Security and the government sneaking up on you. Under Obama, we actually had startings of a recovery and somewhat peaceful relations around the world. And we wound up uh, handing off a recovering economy. Under, Don, under, John, under Trump, we had plenty, disrespect. January 6th, the insurrections, impeachments, and way, way, way too much drama on his watch. Now, how does this affect Trump? Executive orders. President Biden has signed several executive orders reversing key policies of the Trump administration. These include actions on the coronavirus, climate change, and immigration. Border policy. The Biden administration has rescinded the Trump era border policy. However, the reality is much more nuanced with a long history of approaches to humanitarian migration across presidents and some positive moves towards from Biden. In the Iran policy, Trump has criticized Biden's Iran policy, pointing to his own sanctions enforcement and unilateral withdrawal from the multi-nation Iran nuclear deal as evidence he would be tougher on Iran. However, the big thing that Trump did under this uh, Biden administration, the reversal of his policies, was something called Project 2025. I'm now going to elaborate on some of the points that uh, are in this project done, are in, that are in this project done by the Heritage Foundation, and what it could mean to come through. First of all, Project 2025 is a plan to reshape the executive branch of the federal government in the event of a Republican victory in the 2024. The United States presidential election. Established in thousands of conservatives to Washington, D.C., to replace existing federal service workers, it characterizes as a deep state to further uh, the objectives of the next Republican president. Participants in the project cannot promote a specific presidential candidate, but many have close ties to Donald Trump. The plan would perform a swift takeover of the entire executive branch under a maximalist version of the unitary executive theory, a theory proposing the president of the United States as absolute power of the executive branch upon a, a inauguration. Here are some key points that are involved in Project 2025. In Project 2025's manifesto, Roger Savino writes that the FDA is ethically and legally obligated to revisit and withdraw its initial approval of mifeprestone and mesopropyl. He also recommends that the CDC update its public messaging about the unsurpassed effectiveness of modern fertility awareness-based methods of contraception. Serafino says that the HHS should require that every state report exactly how many abortions take place within its borders at what gestational age of the child and for what reason, the mother's state of residence and what method. Two, Trump will there also be a census citizenship question. The project seeks to revive a presidential a Trump administration effort to include a question of whether an individual counted in the decennial census is a U.S. citizen. The census population count is used to reapportion congressional seats and the electoral college. The Trump administration publicly argued it wanted a new question to prevent racial and language discrimination under the Voting Rights Act, an argument the Supreme Court found to be contrived in rejecting the question of, for the 2020 census. The 14th Amendment of the Constitution states that a congressional appointment must include the whole number of persons from each state rather than citizens. On climate policy, Heritage Foundation and Project 2025. Energy Climate Director Diana Fitgott Roth has suggested Americans should use more natural gas as allegedly cleaner person fossil fuels. Project 2025 also includes repeat, repealing the Inflation Reduction Act, 
a landmark law that offers $370 billion for clean technology, shuttering the loan program's office for, of the Department of Energy, eliminating climate change from the National Security Council agenda, and encouraging allied nations to use fossil fuels. The blueprint supports Arctic drilling and declaring that the federal government has an obligation to develop vast oil and coal re resources. Project 2025 would also reverse a 2009 finding from the Environmental Protection Agency that determined that carbon dioxide emissions are harmful to human health, preventing the federal government from regulating greenhouse gas emissions. The climate section of the report was written by several authors, including Mandy Kanosika, the former chief of staff from the EPA, who considers herself principal to the United States withdrawal from the 2015 Paris Agreement, the role of the Department of Energy has developed by Bernard McNamee, who advised several fossil fuel companies or the top authors who are also election deniers for climate change. And also Project 2025 seeks expansion of presidential powers. Project 2025 seeks to place the entire executive branch of the US federal government under direct presidential control, eliminate independence of the Unitarian, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's just I keep getting distracted. There are no people coming in on Zoom. The plan praises its presidential agenda on a maximalist theory of unitary executive theory, already doing that Article 2 of the United States Constitution vests power in solely in the president. While Trump is not first president to consider policies Related to unitary executive theory, the idea has seen a resurgence and popularization within the Republican Party following the 9-11 terrorist attacks in 2020 in 2001. Trump, the front runner for the 2024 presidential inauguration, stated in 2019 that Article 2 of the United States Constitution granted him the right to do whatever as president, a common claim made by supporters of unitary executive theory. A similar remark was echoed in 2018 when he claimed he could fire special counsel Robert Mueller. Oh, come on. In November 2023, the Washington Post reporting that deploying the military for domestic law enforcement under the Surrection or Insurrection Act would be immediate priority upon the second in Trump inauguration in 2025. That aspect of the plan was being led by Jeffrey Clark a Trump co-defendant in the Georgia election racketeering prosecution, an unnamed co-conspirator in the president's in the federal prosecution of Trump for election, election obstruction. The plan also includes directing the Justice Department to pursue those Trump, who's, those Trump considers disloyal or political adversaries after the post-election was published online. The Heritage spokesman said there were no plans related to the Insurrection Act or targeting of political enemies within Project 2025. Therefore, the project document, unspecified federal workers of the DOJ, EPA, and USAID were described as radicalist left ideologues and activists who were embedded in their department. And of course, when discussing the United States Department of Health and Human Services, Roger Serafino, the Heritage Department's Vice President on Domestic Policy, called for rescinding, the regula rescinding of regulations, rescinding the re re prohibiting discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation, gender identity, transgender status, sex characteristics, etc. It is my contention the Republicans would love LGBTQs because they do say, let's get rid of Biden, let's get Biden to quit, plus Kamala. But that's a sort of a small joke up there in the, in the things. Other key points about Trump in 2024. One, the rejection of democracy, the rule of law, and equal rights under the law in favor of strong men who interprets the popular will. According to Trump, the election was stolen, he said in 2020. I am your justice, I am your retributions, Trump said in 2023. Authoritarians believe society needs strong leaders to maintain stability. 
They best dictated the power to maintain social order through the use of force, armed police, militia, and bureaucracy. In contrast, fascists view strong leaders as the means of discovering what society needs. They regard the leader as the embodiment of society, the voice of the people. Two, the galvanizing of popular rage against cultural elites. Your enemies are media elites. The elites will let us from one financial and foreign policy disaster to another. Authoritarians do not stir people up against establishment elites. They use or corrupt these elites to gain and maintain power. By contrast, fascists galvanize public rage at presumed or imaginary cultural elites and use mass rage to gain and maintain power. They stir up grievances against those who supposedly display, who supposedly displacing average people and seek revenge. In doing so, they create mass hysteria. We often encourage violence. Three, nationalism based on dominant superior race and historic and historic bloodlines. Tremendous infectious diseases pouring across the border, according to what Trump said in 2025. Jewish people that vote for a Democrat show great disloyalty, Trump said in 2019. Getting critical racist theory out of our schools is a matter of national survival, Trump said in 2022. Fascism embodies what it considers a superior group based on race, religion, and historic bloodlines. Nationalism is a means of asserting that superiority. Fascists worry about disloyalty and sabotage from groups within the nation that don't share the same race or bloodlines. The others are scapegoated, excluded or expelled, sometimes even killed. And the fourth point is extolling brute strength and heroic warriors. You'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. And that's what uh, Trump said on January 6th. I am your warrior, Trump said in 2023. <clears throat> the goal of authoritarianism is to gain and maintain state power. For authoritarians, strength comes in the form of large armies and munitions. By contrast, the ostensible goal of fascism is to strengthen society. Fascism's method of accomplishing this is to reward those who win ec economically and physically and to denigrate or exterminate those who lose. Fascism also depends on organized bullying, a form of social Darwinism. For the fascist, war and violence are a means of strengthening society by culling the weak and extolling heroic warriors. There's also a disdain of women and fear of non-standard gender identities or sexual orientation. When you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Wrap them by the pussy. You can do anything. You have to treat them like shit, Trump said back in 1992. I will promote positive education about the nuclear family rather than the seeing the things that make men and women different, Trump said in 2023. Fascism is organized around the particular hierarchy of male dominance. The fascist heroic warrior is male. Women are relegated to subservient roles. In fascism, anything that challenges the traditional heroic mayor's roles of protector, provider and control of the family is considered a threat to the social order. Here's basically what Trump says to paraphrase from Hitler. I will get rid of the communist vermin. I will take care of the threat from within. Migrants are poisoning the blood of our country and one people, one family, one glorious nation. Make America great again. And of course, you know, we got an election coming up, and uh, sometimes we may not be faced with much of a choice, but uh, considering Beavis and Butthead, well, I'd rather have Beavis right now. <laughs> He's the guy with the ice cream cone, the white-haired white guy. Trump is, a, no, Trump's Beavis, Butthead is Beavis, Trump, and Biden Butthead. It's just something I throw in. 
Now, this is going to end the slideshow part of my speech, so I'll get rid of this real quick as soon as I get rid of this screen sharing. And I want to share a couple of uh, videos with you guys on uh, what I really think is going to be happening in um, Trump land here in a few couple minutes. So just give me a second to cue these up. Give me a minute to cue these up, please. And it's going to take a minute or two. But anyway, oh, come on. Yeah. It's going to come up here in a minute. Okay. Oh, come on. My computer is going to give me a little trouble, so just bear with me, please. Will you please mute? Okay, we'll get this taken care of in a second here. Okay. Now I'm going to show this brief clip from the Lincoln Project so that uh, you know you guys can see exactly what I think it does a good uh, general thing. Um, all right, let's see. Here we go. All right, it's going to be coming up in a minute here. Like I said, it, it does take a minute or two with YouTube sometimes, so bear with me for a minute, okay? This was done a while back, but it will uh, kind of show you guys exactly what Trump is, what a dictator is, and I'm sorry it's taken so damn long to get up here, but it uh, doesn't seem to be cooperating right now, but uh, it's an old laptop. Just bear with me, please, for a second while we pull it up. Okay, here we go. Oh, God. Seems like. It appears we lost our connection. It should be restored shortly.
Thank you, Charles. That's why I don't I don't encourage showing of videos because the technology isn't quite there yet. Well, it also uses a lot of bandwidth as well. So uh, yeah. So if you want us to 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 move to uh, cross out to start video, it might uh, help uh, give them a little bit more the bandwidth, including the the mute. I don't just know if that just, is. Just, just a suggestion. Do you think he knows that he's lost this? Do we need to call him on? Yeah. The phone? Yeah, he's aware of it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's happened before. It's by the way, we we have a new web page on our main website in which we have videos and PowerPoint presentations. Uh there's a link to it. On the main site, you see a little guy with a screen. And if you want to see videos, uh, I always recommend they be posted there. And then anybody can look at videos at their own. Well, anyway, you guys, own. I'm sorry. Okay. Are you guys, were you, I know we lost connection for a while there. Can everybody hear me again? Yes. Okay, Chris, I'm sorry about that, but... Uh, Fine. I did want to share. Uh, we were having some technical problems here. I must say, well, I don't know when you lost connection or not, but uh, we, we really lost have, uh, that you were putting the YouTube up. Okay, well, it's up now, and I'm going to try to play it real quick because it does give a good uh, a good uh, summation of what's going on with Trump. So just bear, give me a second here to pull it up, and we'll be all set. And then after that, we'll take questions. And I do apologize for losing connection here. So, I definitely want uh, a copy of this presentation, Tim. It's very good. We'll share screen one more time. Okay, here we go. I'm not going to go full screen on this because it will go, you'll see it real quick. Boastfully, I'll start up from the beginning here. Rising before post authority. Okay, can everybody hear this now? We're going to start again. Socialist authoritarians all start the same way. Yes. Mostly strutting like a rooster, posing for cameras. Prancing before adoring crowds. Promises of prosperity and justice. Then, the persecution of faith and dissent. The propaganda. Enemies lists. Informers. The secret police. The knock on the door. The stolen lands, homes, and dreams of generations. Yes. Authoritarians always start the same. That's why more and more people are saying, Trump is just English for Castro. The Lincoln Project is responsible for the content of this advertising. Or maybe we should just say, Trump is English for Putin. All right, at this point, I think I made my point of what I think about President Trump. And that uh, we've had, you know, that Biden's administration was uh, co going to have a third term. And I must not have had as much energy as I thought, because I normally could stand up here without much trouble. 
But uh, let's go in and uh, start with your questions. And I'll entertain questions from the audience. So go ahead and unmute and ask a question or anybody else from the audience here. Okay, Andy, go ahead. You know, I okay. Andy's question was, did I come across any of the points in, during my speech that uh, had the 14 points that Hitler was doing, and is Trump using it as a playbook? My answer is yes, I have come across it. And yes, one of the things that did say was to write a plan when you get in there. The Heritage Foundation wrote Project 2025, which is available for download on the, on the thing. And it's kind of frightening to see what you have to say. Although I'm a conservative myself, I believe in uh, family values. I have a little trouble with the LGBTQ problems. And I do support, you know, a woman's right to choose, but I'd rather see babies not killed. You know, as a matter of fact, I'm fundamentally against abortion, but I'm not a woman, so I don't know. But at the same time, I'd like to see it safe, legal, available, but very, very rare. And that's the way I think it should be. The other point of the matter is, I do support two parent families. I think it's the best way to raise kids. I also think it's the best way to, um, you know, have a, have a good society. I also believe in people working. At the same time, though, I also know too that government does sometimes have to take care of some disadvantaged and, uh, you know, especially with our health care, I think right now that uh, we have an abomination, abominable system because we are the most expensive in the world, although we do have good innovation. Um, I think the single payer method that they do use in some of the European countries may be a better advantage with supplemental insurance available for purchase. Now, as far as I'm concerned, though, what really concerns me about everything else about particularly about trump is you know he's done it once four years endless impeachments endless investigations endless drama we don't need another drama king and press president even though some things may have happened under trump like you know he did bring us some prosperity so did biden he had the lowest unemployment rate under oh biden under, under Biden than we had even under Trump. And I, I did think that his, uh, Trump's coronavirus response was too little, too late, too much uh, politicized, and that Biden did have to come in and do things. Now, I do understand that uh, we have to have, this may happen again. And Trump also, you know, did many things. Now, Republicans are also talking about investigating Fauci and investigating a lot of other people and to just to try to get back at the people who are getting in there. And I honestly think that uh, if we're on our way to fascism, we could no faster achieve it than under an administration, a second administration of Donald Trump. I think by maybe a little bit getting up there to run, but if we have a choice, I would much rather see Biden up there than Trump any day, because uh, even if he starts slipping, he's going to have a lot of powerful advocates in there. And I just don't like the way the Republican Party is going these days. I liked it under Reagan. I liked it, uh, some of the conservative values that they espoused. But when they were working with Democrats and there was a little bit more of a harmonious relationship involved with them. OK, next question. Anybody from the uh, peanut? Kelvin, you go ahead. Okay. Um, why have you tabled this question as Obama's third term, and then done everything you can to? Because the only the only person I know that has ever mooted the idea, apart from the occasional uh, congressman, which has been on the on the box for a long time, and has struggled to get a second there. Uh, as far as I can say, my research that I did briefly on this question, uh, why have you said it as Obama's third term and all of the stuff you, you're talking about is uh, the machinations of Donald Trump to get a third? Because he's the only person I know that has even mooted the idea of repealing the Fourth Amendment. Well, the thing is, uh, Kelvin, 
Obama's third term means a lot of the policies and a lot of the things that Obama did in his presidency are still being carried out by Joe Biden, particularly the particularly uh, Obamacare. And, uh, you know, also, too, uh, he was also trying to revive the Iran nuclear deal, which I think is kind of stupid now. And you noticed uh, Biden. Yeah, yeah but, 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 has Obama done absolutely anything to intimate that he wanted a third term? I mean, I from what I understand, it. what I've seen of Obama is he, 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 well, he, he left office. He, he hasn't got any documents. He hasn't got any uh, documents. He just, he just left and just like went <laughs> home and removed every top button from every shirt he's got. You know, that's, the, 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 that, the man is not, he, he's not intimated that he wants any, 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 anything to do with government. The guy has been a TV producer at best. Uh, and on the occasional campaigning in in, uh, in Georgia uh, and stuff, and a little bit for Biden, he's remained remarkably uh, and actually um, too silent under the Trump administration and sub subsequent scandals. Um, well, I the, man, the man has, not, has done absolutely nothing to expect. He wants anything to do with office again. All right, Kelvin. My my, I don't think that Obama will seek a third term. I don't think Obama is interested in running for president again. My point was is that my dad has always told me, under Biden, it's quote unquote Obama's third term. And I'm trying to point out that a lot of the policies and parallels that are under Joe Biden were also. But isn't that isn't that a natural isn't that a, isn't that a natural continue, isn't that like a natural continuation of uh, administrations? For example, Reagan had uh, you know like uh, Bush had but you know Reagan had similar people like uh, you know like uh, uh, you know, uh, you, know uh, uh, you know you're going to keep the same people and the same same policy. You're your members of the same party. You know you're going to keep. Similar people on the, on the if their party your party. This is this is a natural continuation of yes, I, uh, governments under the same party. Well, Kelvin, I agree with you on that. It's just that the reason I'm saying it's Obama's third term is because of the same reason you just stated. Um, the policies under Obama are a lot the same as they are under Joe Biden, and as my dad said, he had a lot of contempt for Obama. And he also had a lot of contempt for uh, Joe Biden, though in the end he did not like Trump at all. But uh, you know that's what I was trying to say. Obama's third term; it's done now, done being done under Joe Biden. And a lot of people in the Republican Party used it as sort of a joke and whatnot. But I'm just simply saying that uh, you know I'm I'm seeing our nation right now still prosperous. Yes, we're having an inflation problem, but the economy's turning around. There was a bottoming out after the coronavirus pandemic. We still need to get in there. And I do believe that Trump did some good in getting rid of some of the overregulation of industry. But I also like, too, that we're finally getting some unions back uh, to, to, cope, cope, to get rid of some of the corporate control that we've had over the companies for all. Anyway, did I make myself clear, Calvin? Yeah, by the way, can I, can I just say for here in the UK, if you get rid of Biden, can we have him? What? If you get rid of Biden, can we have him? Can you have him? If what? you guys get rid of Biden, Biden, can we have him? I guess you can if you want. Yeah, but... he's, the, he's the only guy, I've, the only administration I've ever known that's reduced inflation and increased employment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're right about that. Okay. Look it up. Look it up. Find out any other administration that's ever reduced inflation and increased employment in peacetime. Okay, let's go to Charlie next. Go ahead, Charlie. All right, Charlie, you got your hand up. If you're ready to go, go ahead. Yeah, uh, try to speak louder, Tim. 
All right. It's a little hard to hear you. Uh, now, Trump came along and he tried to get rid of the deep state. Obama had filled the government with his supporters. And Trump tried. He wasn't totally successful in getting rid of the deep state of Obama's supporters who were running the government. And what happened was Biden came along and put an end to that and reinstated all kinds of Obama supporters back in influential positions. Isn't Obama technically right now the president of the United States already, except in name? Wouldn't he like to be officially back in office? He's never left office. Well, I think, Charlie, the contentions you're talking about are the same as my dad had about Obama. He said the guy never left office. He's just a uh, Biden is uh, largely running Obama's policies. And that a lot of times because of uh, Biden's in office and there's a lot of former um, advisors from Obama that he's doing essentially the same things. I don't know if Obama's a, an active part of it, but I'm sure that him and Biden talk quite a bit. And I'm also sure that, uh, you know, a lot of the policies that were working under, under, um, under Obama are also working under Joe Biden. Now, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I think Obama may, may have stepped back but I do think that there might that there is a good relationship between him and Joe Biden because you know they were they established a deep friendship after eight years of being president and VP. And you've got to remember too that Trump, that uh, Biden did not choose to run in uh, 2016 because he wanted Hillary Clinton to step in, and he was he didn't start running until some of the egregiousness of the uh, Biden administration. Now there's- Follow up question. Follow up Go question. Ahead, Charlie. Go Isn't ahead. it true that Biden is president of the United States because Obama said it was okay for him to be president? Well, I don't know, Charlie, if that's the case, because you know I think that Obama's endorsement of Biden may have had a lot to do with it. But I honestly think you know, during the 2020 election, um, we had a choice between him and Bernie Sanders. And because they weren't able to continue campaigning because of the alerts of the coronavirus, Joe Biden turned out to be a natural part of it. Now, I don't think that uh, that. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm still. I'm still trying to do some stuff here. We got another person coming in, so bear with me for a minute, okay? Um, bear, bear with me for a minute, please. Uh, for the fact that, uh, you know, it's just that I do know that Joe Biden talk, talks with, uh, I'm sure they talk all, all the time and they bounce policy questions off of each other. But I do know that when you have a whole bunch of people that were, under a former president who are now back in office. Yes. They have a lot of the same uh, policies and procedures that they did with, with the previous president. So um, with that being said, did they answer your question, Charlie, or not? That's because Obama's telling him what to do. I, you know what, that's that's insane. I'm just, I, I can't help myself, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Okay, let's move on. Chris, you have a uh, hand up, so let's answer your question. Chris, you got a Tim, uh, can you hear me now? I'm here, Chris. Uh, so, yes, I can hear you. Uh, good, good. The um, uh, I I want to uh, commend you for your uh, uh, for your address on this uh, on this topic, um, and I definitely think all of us should probably uh, take another look at this as well. So if we can post that sooner or later rather than later, um, 
And uh, I think you guys know that I'm, I'm a precinct chair. Uh, we keep abreast of all the things that are occurring and uh, and also keep uh, abreast of uh, a number of people who are mentors for me who have been in Congress, who've been working in, in you know, on the Hill for at least more than 20 years. So, um, and what I want to point out is that um, the, uh, what your what the topic that you brought in for the uh, for the discussion uh, today um, also reaches back, you know, to Roosevelt uh, and uh, with uh, Social Security, Johnson, uh, who uh, who fostered and made Medicare possible, and uh, so these uh, uh, and then uh, now we have uh, Biden coming up forward with. Uh, IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act. So there's a lot of things that uh, presidents uh, uh, take advantage of the of the kinds of things that they put into place when they were president, and then the other presidents uh, forward uh, work with them. So this is a sort of a building process that the that the that the presidents uh, uh, participate in. And so the uh, so I just want to point out that. It's not maybe so much uh, Biden relying on somebody else's, um, uh, you know, they need to 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 uh, to uh, be sort of uh, thought of is that it's all somebody else's thing. Uh, these presidents are also building; is they're building and moving forward with new policies, and I just want to point out that that should be recognized as well, and uh, so. Uh, I just wanted to point that out and get your idea about uh, about it at this point. All right. Well, as it comes to point out, you know, presidents are our leaders of our country. They also introduce legislation over their terms. Roosevelt did a lot by, um, you know, starting Social Security. He also was the one who started uh, getting our country out of a depression by massive federal spending programs. And was one of the first to try to, um, you know, get the depression out. John Maynard Keynes' book called uh, "The Theory of General Theory of Employment and Money" was one of the books that uh, he used to get onward with um, with our. Uh, was one of the books he used to justify big federal spending, and. Uh, I often think that Roosevelt knew we were going to get into war in, in his second term. And he, uh, you know, was involved in his matter of fact, he did run on a platform of peace, but that was all broken down when uh, December 4th happened. And I do know that he, that one of the reasons why Roosevelt took a third term was he wasn't happy with the uh, candidates that were in there now. As far as starting a legacy is concerned, I believe that the one who really started a legacy was uh, was Eisenhower with the passage of the 1955 Eisenhower Interstate Highway Act, and that was the largest uh, the largest public works project in history. It dwarfs anything that uh, that uh, Roosevelt did with the uh, would be with some of this project he did. But at the same time, it was also needed around our country to kind of start, um, you know, getting a unified culture, movement of goods and transportation, and a lot of other stuff. You also remember Johnson and his great society where they had a lot of uh, welfare coming in, a lot of other policies that are still around. And even Nixon, who was a conservative Republican, started the EPA. He started the anti-pollution campaigns, mm -hmm. and he also started the war on drugs, which has been proven to be uh, not that good, but it's still around with us. Mm -hmm. um, presidents have eight years to prove their points and to start a good, whether they be federal agencies or something else. And it's a good thing that there is some continuation. But remember, one thing we do want is a rule of law. Presidents generally follow a legislative process they have, um, they have to be accountable to themselves to the Congress of the United States. And in a lot of cases, there is some checks and balances on their power. 
But at the same point, you know, uh, given the uh, right terms and conditions, we could lose our democracy. And I'm not one who's willing to lose it. I've seen too many times how, I mean, if you look at some of the other countries around the world where Trump was uh, involved, they had a they look at Brazil when they had that Bolsonaro come in. And then all of a sudden they reelected after one term of him, they reelected their former president to try to get things back under control. Right now in, uh, the, the, in, in the Dutch just elected a, uh, a Trumpian like Republican who uh, yeah, Trump. it's a Dutch version of Trump and they're pretty much soon. Victor Orban was in Poland for a while. They elected him and he was ousted yeah. out of his ear. You know, so uh, anyway, um, did I answer your question, Chris? Yes, because the uh, because presidents bring new legislation forward with their uh, if they if they got any value that they're, they're they're putting forth new uh, new things uh, to to move our our society forward, and not just necessarily relying totally on the previous president. And, uh, right. and let me tell you, if he was doing that after Trump, I think we would be in a great deal more danger than uh, than we currently are now. Well, I just know that uh, I'll I'll uh, just put this in a little bit brief. There was a there was a uh, author around the time of 2016, and my dad was kind of a Trump Trumpian at the time, but he started souring on him a little bit more. There is a link on C-SPAN on a book that was written by, okay, I'm going to have to look this up, uh, written by, I'll have to look it up, but it was written by an author who generally, um, I'll know his name in a minute, um, the author basically contended though that uh, he was a, he was a columnist who did who liked to write on the things like the tax code. And then he'd go look into an exemption on the tax code and name names of corporations who would uh, benefit by it. He would also do a lot of other dry analysis. Before Trump was elected, he was asked to do a biography in less than eight weeks on Donald Trump. And he wrote a quick biography of Trump's political stuff, and he talked about a lot of stories. Well, the guy knew that Trump was a crook back then. He went into several examples about how Trump uh, and a flim flam man way back then. And he then said, Trump will not go away quietly. He said that once Trump leaves the office, he's always going to say it's never his fault. He's going to blame the election. He's going to blame everybody else. And he's going to do his best to keep his legacy alive. And that he was the greatest man who ever was president of the United States. But he said he will not go away quietly. Like other presidents have when they, at the end of their first or third term. Right. Or first or second term. But anyway, you know, you're seeing that now with Donald Trump. And I'm afraid myself what may happen to our country if he gets reelected. So anyway, did I answer you? Who else has a question? Yeah, matter of fact, I'm, that's why I think that what the presentation you made is a red alert to everybody about what could happen if we do not move, move forward and away from the former president. Okay, anybody else have questions? Anybody, okay, Andy, go ahead. Say a few words if you ran across all the evidence out of all the red states, including uh, officials in who are not count the vote for Republicans. Voter suppression. They're getting ready to change the vote rules in a lot of these states in the next election so that the Democrats can't get a vote for us. Did you see any of that? I didn't feel delve that deep into uh, what you're saying on this, you know. What I mainly concentrated on in the election was uh, Obama's third term. Like I said, under Joe Biden, I added this stuff about Trump later on when I watched a rally a couple weeks ago, and he was just rambling. I said, this man sounds like Hitler. 
And I think, oh, yeah. well, also, too, there's something called the Dictator's Playbook that's out on uh, out on YouTube. Okay, Charlie, go ahead. Okay, Charlie, go ahead. Yes. Um, Obama's been totally successful in implementing socialism across the United States. Through Joe Biden, do you think he's still pursuing that goal? I don't think that Biden is pursuing socialism per se. I think what Biden is trying to do is to get our economy running. And I do know that I somewhat don't, uh, I don't really have an opinion yet about what government should be doing to encourage industries. For example, a lot of these electric car initiatives he's been doing, there are now electric cars sitting at dealerships that are not being sold as fast as they once were. And that a lot of the auto companies are kind of now going back to plug-in hybrids rather than pure electric just to move forward with, with certain things. I don't think Obama's a socialist, but I think he is trying to reduce our emissions, trying to get back into certain things. And to hear the Republicans talk about it, he's the worst president we've had in history. I don't think so. Um, I honestly think, though, that a certain amount of uh, government you know, I'm not all pure capitalist like I once was. I'm now more or less like what Sweden's doing now. They took all their social programs, they put them into autopilot, they put out a contract, they review that contract and a lot of that stuff. They have voucher schools, they have health care, but they also pay a 50% tax rate as well to have all that stuff. Now, if, if the American people want it, they can have it, but they're going to also have, have to be willing to pay for it. This stuff of where we get an economic economy going by you know, Republicans just saying, click three times and say tax cuts and everything's okay is not the way to go. All right. Did I answer your question, Charlie? It's just that they asked Republican voters why they identified themselves as Republicans. And the standard response were they were opposed towards the establishment of socialism in the United States. Well, yeah, that's part of the talking points right now. But, you know, the thing is, is that if the Republicans aren't even aren't, aren't, aren't even all capitalistic anyway, they're more monopolistic than the Democrats. The Republicans right now want benefits for big companies. And they, those big companies that claim free markets are some of the biggest handouts of the government dole. They complain about the welfare cheats and the mothers when they themselves are probably some of the biggest cheaters in the federal government itself. The Koch brothers are a good example of it. And we've been buffaloed by their free market ideals for quite a while. Now, I'm not saying I don't necessarily agree with everything they say, but, you know, just to hear some of the stuff that's been going on from them is crazy. And then I, I am also, also not too happy with the leftists either. Some of the more radical ideology on that stuff. I don't think you should be teaching gender transformation to third graders. I, if, if a guy wants to change his sex, let him wait till he's 18 and make up his own mind. I don't think though that uh, that these uh, drugs are gonna come into place. I, I do believe that, uh, you know, it might be a, between a doctor and his parents and all that stuff, but there has to be some limits, particularly with Women's sports, leave women's sports to women. Um, leave things alone. I have a lot of trouble, like I said, understanding this transgender stuff. I do know that there are some cases where it might be necessary under like a misborn or something like that, but it's a very, very rare phenomenon, but not as widespread as psychologists like to think it is. And for a kid who's in third grade, quote, unquote, choose his gender is, to me, frankly, bullshit. But that's my own opinion on this stuff. Um, okay. Uh, did I answer your question, Charlie? I think right now... I have no idea what you're talking about, about this transgender and well, young Charlie, children. I just, think I just gave All they opinion. asked for was not to beat up on gay people, mistreat gay people. I'm not trying to mistreat anybody. 
I am for the full participation of anybody and any minority and any type of person in society. I'm just saying that I personally have a little bit of trouble with it. And I Yeah, like you it. have trouble with me. You think we should mistreat gay people? No, I never said that. I am fully for okay. I'm fully for rights, anti-discrimination. But uh Anyway, I, I, let's let's not get, let's not go down this rabbit hole anymore because I'm sure we could all do this. All right, Michelle. I mean, Margaret, you've got a question. Yes, go ahead. I've got a question. Uh, Tim, Margaret, you what want do you, yeah, What do you think about right Joe ahead. Manchin? What do you think about Joe Manchin? Do you mm -hmm. think he's going to try to run as what a Democrat or as an Independent or not run at all? Or what is your opinion of him? As a Republican. Joe Manchin probably was a I think well, he was from Kentucky, right? And he's a Democrat. West I think Virginia. he's from West, yeah. West Virginia. West Virginia. One of those cold states. West Virginia. Well, I think that Joe Manchin, uh, you know, what we don't like to see is one lone member of the legislature trying to stop legislation in its tracks. Now, I think Joe Manchin was a good uh, voice to some of the more radical lefties in Congress at the time and brought a little bit more um, more of stability and some more common sense to some of the bills that some of the more radicalized people of Congress were wanting to pass. Now, I don't think that... Uh, what? Inflation Reduction Act and some of the other things that Biden passed in his first term that Obama, that Manchin was not on board with, but they had to negotiate with him to get some of the more uh, no, re Republican not. views in there. Not, not, you know, but not so fat. You know, not not, not so quick on that one. Uh, I'll tell you what really scares me is a guy like uh, the head of the uh, who's the guy stopping uh, all the promotions in. Um, Tommy Tupperville. Oh. No, oh, Tommy Tupperville, yeah. Oh, dear. It's blocking uh, uh, promotions in the military. Yes. Tommy for all of us who are, who, are, who are veterans, that's really bad. Some people think that the purpose to block those is that when Trump, if and when he's elected, he will put his own people in power in the military, and the military will be controlled by him. Now, of course, that's a person who's probably paranoid and has a conspiracy theory. Yeah, and it I is would, serious. I would, I would tend to agree with it, but Tommy is, is just stubborn enough to keep pulling up those uh, legislations over his abortions uh, thing. He talks one game and does another. And the thing is, I think what's going to finally happen is that even his Republican colleagues are disgusted with him, and I think they're going to do some kind of workaround on Senate rules to override Good. it if he Good. doesn't get it soon. Um, now, I, I, am, I, I know we're having a lot of speculation here tonight, and uh, now, it's already, we're going to have to go to Now, who else has got a question? All right, let's go to rebuttals. Um, I'm going to, you, you want to, who wants, who wants to rebut here tonight? Just go ahead and raise your hand. And we also have, let's I'm say, sure Andy's Tim, let's say, Chris, speaker. Well, the, I am, I'm sorry I wasn't standing tonight. I just had it. I, 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 well, yeah, but, uh, I'm not feeling as good as I get. Okay, um, I'm good. Since there's not a lot of people rebutting, we've got about maybe uh, 45 minutes or so. So if Andy, you want to rebut first, or Charlie, I'm going to give it to you guys about maybe eight minutes or so. Charlie, would you like to go first? All right. I. I uh, okay, we'll give you I, eight, eight to 10 minutes, Charlie. Go ahead. I'll give you the spotlight and. Uh, I'll let you I'm go. Not... Well, just take your time. Go ahead and rebut. All right. Let me speak then. All right. Thank you, Tim. Uh, 
for a nice overview here, I think the most frightening thing is uh, the outline of, you gave of Trump's uh, Project 2025, which I had not known about before. I personally don't think he should be eligible to run for any office at the federal level on the basis of his activities on January the 6th. And he should be prosecuted for that. And one of the penalties are that you precluded from pursuing the office of president ever again. Since he obviously was engaged in obsessive misconduct in office. Absolutely. It was a treasonable activity. It's treason, what he fostered and encouraged, and he let the, 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 the activity pursue. He did nothing to preclude it from stopping and instead fostered it and relished in watching it. Um, you have to act immediately to stem, uh, to say it got out of control or something is precisely what he wanted. It was by design, it was intended, and he appeared to be in, responded favorably to what was taking place in perhaps one of the darkest episodes in the history of this country. And he should be held responsible for that. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the penalties, of course, is, is to be barred from, if you are engaged in mis uh, prohibited personnel practice as a federal employee, is that you're precluded from pursuing positions again and resuming again egregious activities. Um, Joe seems to have done a pretty good job. I th believe one of the major reasons people voted for him was that he was going to do something to curb this pandemic, which apparently has effectively taken place. They tried to minimize hardship. Uh, they're pursuing some aggressive policies. As a matter of fact, in excess of Obama. Obama was a little conservative in some respect. Um, uh, Mr. Obama is very pro-labor. And being a union representative, he gets my he has 100% approval rating from the AFL CIO. Now the choice is so blatantly clear, so blatantly clear. You don't have to be a, a talking head on TV, a political scientist, to perceive this Project 25 is 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 not. I'm difficulty describing it. It's perhaps a retreat into the past. It is not the inculcation of the American values, the status of our of our society, but it's the antithesis of it. Uh, they will try to perhaps they portray an image if I was campaign director is that the nation is in serious state of disarray and you need someone to come in and save the nation. Well, that's the playbook. If you buy into that and are incapable of perceiving that it is not the case. The United States has, amazingly enough, the United States has always tried to be the most perfect country as opposed to other ones. And that is the admirable feature and attribute of the United States. Uh, we have not abandoned that. They're doing pursuing goals, particularly things in eco ecology, e extension of human rights, protections and guarantees. Uh, there seems always is the issue of the economy. And there's even some debate whether or not the president of the United States actually has any real control over the economy of the United States, it's been said. As if they can 
choose it. No, that's not necessarily always the case. Uh, certainly, Obama made a concerted effort to uh, rectify the economic disaster that he inherited from the Republicans upon taking office in 2008. Those remedies were absolutely essential. Um, however, it appears that our economy is proceeding quite well. There appears to be some issues with inflation, which is quite honestly, I'm not an economist and I do not fully comprehend. Now, the choice is clear. We cannot retreat as a nation, as a people, and enter a period of darkness. And these authoritarian regimes, which are found perhaps only in third world countries. We are the most advanced nation on earth in terms of our technology and our living standards and our industrial know-how. This is not a place that has no place whatsoever uh, in this nation. These, no, these authoritarian measures, there's no clear utilitarian purpose for them. Um, the nation is on course. I think it's doing pretty good, as a matter of fact. Um, the if if issues like some of the issues are now you've got to be cautious about looking about wedge issues and they will try them to dissuade you it seems to be like they focus on immigration uh now that that the immigrants are somehow people entering the united states are going to ruin the nation which is basically a nonsensical concept. Um, my heritage uh, stems from the great entry of immigrants around in the year 1900 is when my family first made an appearance in the United States. And the nation certainly benefited by the people that came in that process. There's no reason to believe that the people who are coming into the United States today are going to in any way, shape or form harm the nation. Uh, they're basically looking to provide for themselves and they're willing to work hard to do so on that basis if given the opportunity to do so. So the immigration issue, I think you've got to watch out on that. Uh, they're gonna make that uh, like this nation is headed towards ruin by admitting a handful of immigrants into the country uh, like that. Um, some of the other things, the certainly the human rights thing and the gay issue is, is a term, I, I will use a Latin term, de minimis. This is of little or no significance. Um, basically, we just think that People should be able to choose what they want to do in this regard. They're minority, extreme minority, maybe one to three percent pop constitute. It doesn't mean the rights are not entitled to it, but it's certainly not an issue uh, that should influence it. Nor does there need any remedy in that regard, except to ensure that they there is no mistreatment of people on the basis of blind prejudice against them. That's what I mean. These are silly things in that regard. Uh, there still is this notion out there that the election was in fact stolen and they're only reclaiming what they actually had won previously and they were denied the victory, which is a ridiculous basic okay. statement altogether. Okay, Charlie, we're going to have to... Uh... All right. Well, that's about it. Thank you very much. No and problem, let's Charlie. go out and get the vote for Joe. All right, Sharon, you got your hand up. You're going to go next. Unmute, Sharon. Okay. Got, I, okay. 
I hope my computer holds up. Um, th th these are just some general comments. First of all, I don't believe with, uh, uh, <clears throat> I don't agree with the premise that somehow, um, you know, we're, ex we're extending Obama's um, president uh -huh. by any means. And certainly by not, not by any, just somebody back whispering in the, you know, to get things arranged and, you know, just sounds like too much of a conspiracy theory, first of all. Secondly, as others have mentioned, it is a natural um, progression. You know, as your party gets in, you kind of more or less continue on the lines of the previous, your previous uh, yes. president that of the same party. Um, I, I, and actually, that's one of the problems with the United States is that we switch parties of the presidency like way too often so it's hard to get anything constructive done um i i i really um, am concerned every time i hear somebody repeating the term deep state yeah. that somebody could actually tell me what the hell that is i don't believe there's any such thing um yes people politicians negotiate they do deals blah 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 but it's not like there's some controlling authority in the background um, that, uh, to me, um, just I, I just can't believe that. And if it is, oh my God, you know. But um, I also agree with um, Charlie, and this is not the, the topic necessarily, but yeah, the, the choice is very clear, but it's very clear to only about half of America. There are like 74 million people who voted for Trump and maybe there will be that many again those people are not they i don't know why why they maintain that mindset and why they continue to believe in a man who obviously lies and doesn't do what he says and um i think i i appreciate the ads that are uh, attacking trump i think he is um his supporters like him because they they imagine that he is powerful and he keeps playing that same tune over and over again every time he gets in the public eye. And, um, you know, this whole thing about, you know, he's being um, persecuted by the left and all that, you know, he's just, he doesn't believe that. He's just using it to, to rally his troops. So I think, I think that if we could find a way to make him look weak, that would be the best way to um detract his current supporters and that's all i have to say okay thank you very much you. uh chris you're next go ahead unmute chris okay. yes uh, what i would like to point out uh, and that was uh, still missing in our in um, our rebuttal here is the impact of continuing to choose the status quo for greed, avarice, and mistrust, and the misuse of the environment of our planet. Um, I'm a member of Sierra Club. I am aware of the um, of the International Government Panel on Climate Change, the IPPC. I have found out that they are about ten years behind. They are following a narrative um, that favors um, um, the wealthy on the planet. They want to continue to have their 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 uh, their wealth, and they're willing to sacrifice the planet that we live on uh, for the sake of using all the balance of the rest of oil and gas on the planet, which will mean that that will impact medicines, cosmetics. And lubricants of anything that we that moves on this planet, including all the machinery as well, regardless of whether you have a uh, an electric vehicle or not, you will still need the uh, the lubricants to make that work. And so it just seems to me that uh, that of all the things that we are having to deal with in terms of how our, our government uh, will finally turn out. That information you gave us tonight, uh, dealing with the environment, is a serious matter. 
and um, and the uh, if the former president becomes president again, he is going to move in the opposite direction that we need to be going to, because the latest data that the, the scientists are reporting is that they have over um, guessed uh, the amount of time that we have left. And the, line, the time that we have left for our government to continue to, that we, uh, that we sometimes take for granted is actually going to come to a halt sooner than we thought. And so it is something that uh, we need to be mindful of. And that's my point. Okay. Thank you. Andy is going to go next. I'm going to switch chairs with him. So uh, uh, let me lower your hand and uh, anybody else who comes up. Okay, Andy, uh, you're, you're up next. That's the mic you're speaking into. The rest of the crowd can hear you well. Okay. All right, Andy, go ahead. Sorry about the crazy no. manipulations, but uh, that's okay. Can everybody hear me? Can everybody hear Andy? I, I assume you can hear me okay. Yeah. Andy. yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I like I'd like to thank Tim for his speech. He made a lot of good points and covered some stuff that's critical. He's absolutely right about the next election. <clears throat> but one of the things the the major media is not covering how far advanced the criminal operation is to suppress the vote a year from now. They're putting people, uh, you know, the, the last election <clears throat> was a trial run to see uh, if it's possible to just change electors, get your own set of electors uh, rather than the ones that the people voted for. Well, the election officials around the country that did their job and allowed the election to go through as an honest election. They didn't succumb to Trump's threats. All of those election officials in, in uh, some, most, all of red states, they're being replaced with Trump toadies, that people that will are looking forward to switching the vote totals and finding however many votes you need to get the Republican elected, whatever, whatever it is. Number one, Greg Palast, the investigative reporter that uh, investigates voter suppression, has he's got a website, Greg B A L A S T Palast or Palast. He wrote the book called "The Best Democracy Money Can Buy," and also he's got a book called "Billionaires and Ballot Bandits." And <clears throat> if we don't uh, get the knowledge and the word out about the voter suppression that's coming up. Millions of people are going to go to the polls next year and be told by the election officials, well, I'm sorry, you're not on the rolls. You can't vote today. And here, take a provisional ballot. And then it's too late. That's one thing. Okay. Got a couple other points. Everybody is missing one big point is that the media, the major media, sold us a fairy tale like the tooth fairy and santa claus for the last six years they keep referring to donald trump as the president of the united states donald trump was never a president he was a corporate criminal psychopath filling the presidential suit and masquerading as our president donald president donald trump was no more an actual president than joe the plumber could be head of brain surgery at Mount Sinai if you put a white coat on it. <laughs> Donald, Donald Trump and Joe the Plumber, what do they have in common? Well, just think about that for a minute. <clears throat> and the, the media is still referring to him as Mr. President, Mr. President. They should be referring to him as a uh, corporate criminal or as Charlie said, Several states now, uh, Trump appointed judges have ruled that yes, Trump was involved in the insurrection, but they're still going to leave him on the ballot to run for president. The mess, you know, if Trump, if Trump is left on the ballot, <clears throat> the criminals that they've installed to change the vote count could very well install Trump again next year. Okay. 
also, as Tom Harvin has been reporting, Tommy Tuberville is not uh, just irritated and holding up the promotion of the you know people at the top levels of our military. He's holding those seats open the way Mitch McConnell held the seat of the Supreme Court open so that they could put a Trump toady in there. We've got a billionaire predator problem in this country. <clears throat> and as a recent article said, they remember the Republican Party in Eisenhower's years. You know, the Re Republican Party back in Eisenhower's time believed in a lot of things that Bernie Sanders is supporting today. That's how far we've come. The Republican Party today is no longer the Republican Party. It's a gathering of corporate criminals and, and intellectual prostitutes that are wholly owned by billionaire predators. If you're not willing to be an intellectual prostitute and take money to vote for evil stuff, you can't really be a Republican senator and congressman. They will vote you out. And the, the, you know, don't have to worry about the Democrats repeating, defeating, defeating you in an election. The Republicans are cleansing the party of anybody with ethics, morals, or a conscience that wants to do anything to help the American people. Tom Hartman has an ongoing open uh, award contest running on his radio program. Uh, he said, you know, you can win a check for $200 if you can send in the number of, of any bill in the last 40 years, any bill that's been proposed by Republicans, passed by Republicans, and signed by a Republican president that actually helped the American people in any way. It didn't just shovel money to billionaires. And so far, nobody has been able to claim the prize. Our, our country is in deep trouble with the media. There's a, there's a DVD called uh, Sense Project Censor, the news from 2013. <clears throat> It describes how the media, the major media, has separated the country into, you know, people that are fighting each other philosophically because we're separated into two groups, basically. Groups that are living in fantasy land, believing things that aren't real, and, and other people that are struggling with reality. The mainstream press has not given a, a near enough adequate coverage to the fact that mega churches in many places in this country were teaching their followers that Trump was sent by God to lead us out of the darkness. Picture that. Trump is the most godly president we've had. Man told 32,000 lies, bald-faced lies, in his four years. He's a, the best description of Trump I heard of was Phil Rockstraw in 2017. He wrote an article called The Suit. And he said the presidency is actually a suit, and every four years we elect somebody to fill that suit and try to be the you know president. Well, he said, what does it say about our country that we elected a person to fill the suit? The suit is actually filled now by a bloated, bloviating, two-legged, toxic waste dump in the shape of an ugly human. That's what we had for four years. And if <clears throat> picture an alien spacecraft coming here and orbiting uh, in orbit and said, take us to your leader and you, you take him to Trump. They have a meeting with Trump and then they go back to their spacecraft and say, this, this human race is too nasty and vile. Just nuke the whole planet from orbit and let them start over. I mean, uh, this is where we are. And a couple other things and I'll go. Yeah, the game, the game plan, one of the game plans is to replace 50,000 dedicated civil servants with 50,000 Trump toadies that will do his bidding. And they, they're already vetting, they're interviewing vetting 50,000 uh, possible Trump toadies to take the place of the head of the EPA, the FDA, all the environmental agencies. Uh, they want to clean house and just we won't have civil service anymore that go from administration to administration you know non-political positions they want to have they want to clean house and install people that will be loyal to trump and as they say promote the burst of fossil fuel because the churches are teaching 
we'll get a whole new planet when Jesus returns, but this one has to be destroyed first. And <clears throat> my landlord in 1987 sent me a five-day eviction notice when she found out we were working for world peace. She said, you're opposed to the upcoming nuclear launch that cleanses the evil empire of the Soviet Union. You're opposed to World War III. You're a tool of the devil. I want you out of my property. Picture that. And today we have churches still teaching that Trump was sent by God to lead us out of the darkness. And if we get out the vote, Trump can finish doing God's work starting in 2025. That, that stuff was insane in 1987. And it's insane today. And if we don't stand up and call it out, if we let this bullshit keep going on, they can install Trump again with the Trump judges he put in that are allowing him to stay on the ballot. So, and the last thing, <clears throat> the other major myth that's driving a lot of what's happening in our country and uh, the 800 bases around the world it's the myth, the total myth, that we were attacked by 9-11 by some other country. There was no attack on America on 9-11. There was the murder of 3,000 people in New York City who weren't told to get out of the building before the explosives were triggered. And also, the correct number of buildings that were destroyed in the World Trade Center was not two. It was seven. They filmed the first two and said we were attacked by Al-Qaeda. They didn't film the other five. The third tower came down at 520. Building three was converted to dust between the two twin towers. Four buildings were destroyed on 9-11, and the other three were so badly damaged with pre-placed explosives that they were waiting to be pulled down by cranes as rubble. The whole, whole trade center was destroyed by a demolition company to clear the site for a new profitable tower. It was, and it was a real estate fraud mm -hmm. since they called it a terrorist event. The guy got $4.5 billion to build a new tower. He, the, the, owner, the owner of the buildings did not have to pay for asbestos removal or cleanup or anything else. And people, don't, people that don't know this <clears throat> haven't cracked a book yet because there's 30 books out on this and several hundred reports and videos. This is kind of, what I'm telling you is common knowledge all over the world. It has been for years but it's totally blacked out in the United States. And we still have on September 11th, we have, you know, remember, remember the attacks, you know, uh, support the troops, support the troops. Well, General Butler said, draw a 200 mile radius circle around America, bring all the troops home from everywhere and let them defend that in peacetime. We don't need 800 bases and a trillion dollars a year, all a military budget having military dominance of every section on the planet. It's not sustainable, and we're coming to the end of the line trying to prop that up. So uh, for those of you that would like to hear more about these kinds of things, about what's being blacked out currently by the media and what we could do if they lifted the blackout, come hear my speech in two weeks on December 9th. Thank you. I don't know what to say other than the fact that, uh, All that right. uh, just uh, just FYI, Tim, my, I have a cousin that was uh, a Marine Corps officer at the Pentagon. He was there when that plane hit that Pentagon, and he lost his sergeant in that building. So just pointing something out that uh, regardless of what, what, what Tim was saying about the New York, I can tell you for sure they were there when they saw that happen. All right. That you I didn't, I didn't say that there weren't people killed at the Pentagon. I said the official story of who attacked the Pentagon is false. A lot of people died in 2011. Project Censored book, the, the chapter was about false flags and it was about every, all the pieces of false information we were told. A bunch of people were killed at the Pentagon and in New York to create the idea that we were attacked by some foreigners. But it was done by Americans. Okay. Can I can, yeah, can I just can I just put a little yeah, rebuttal in there? Please. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kelvin. All right. Uh, a couple of things. The first one is Charlie. You guys assume that you are the leading technology uh, nation in the world, just like you assume like you are the freest nation in the world. Actually, you're on the ranking of free nations. You're seventeenth. 
You were 15th, but after the abortion laws that have been recently passed, you've slipped down to, to 17th, right? Uh, you Now, militarily, I'll say, yes, you are the most technologically advanced nation on the world. But um, can I ask you guys a question? Have you or have you ever seen anybody pay for a bar bill or a restaurant bill with their phone? This is natural everywhere else. You guys mm. are still in the dark ages when it comes to, to come to things like that, right? Uh, on, the other, on, the, uh, on the 9-11 thing, this has been the rise of a, a whole lot of conspiracy theories, and not just 9-11 conspiracy theories, but it's been a, a, an upsurgence of flat earthers and all kinds of stuff since 9-11. And uh, mostly it's because you guys can't get your head around the fact that you've got the largest military that the world has ever, ever seen, and you were taken down by a bunch of people with crack knives. And you just can't get your head around that. Is that, it? Is that it, yeah. Kelvin? All right. Yeah. Now, Kelvin, repeat what you just said about the largest what? You've got the largest military that the world has ever seen. You've got the two largest air forces in the world. The first one is the United States Air Force. The second largest air force in the world is United is, is the U.S. Navy Air Force. Right. right? You've got the biggest military the world has ever seen, and you were taken down on 9/11 by a bunch of guys, fanatics with craft knives. Get over it. Okay. Thanks. I got a question for. Uh, 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 Andy, um, I do you want to do you, do you want to go ahead and ask a question for Andy? I'll put him back in, Charlie. Let me yeah, it's very right simple. Here. All right, Andy, go ahead and sit down. Yeah, go go ahead, Charlie. What do you got for a question? You you uh, you just said there are thirty books out about nine eleven, telling the truth, and then you say it's censored. Well, if the subject is censored, there wouldn't be any books available yeah. to purchase. And there's so no, much that... about 9-11 on the internet, videos, unbelievable number, <clears throat> that how can you maintain that it's in any way or fashion censored? The, the deal is, Charlie, it doesn't matter how many books are out there. If you can't talk about it on the radio, if they will cut you off, you can't talk about this on television. You know, only 7% of the American public reads books. It doesn't matter how many books there are on a subject. The, the, the information is in books, but it's not on mainstream media. We just had a man here follow me and say that uh, our country was taken down by uh, guys with box cutters. The, the military crash scene investigators and everybody else said that that idea, that that is a total myth. That is not what happened on 9-11, and there's just no debate about it. So uh, in, in order, if you keep allowing, we keep allowing people uh, to get on mainstream media and promote the myth that we were attacked by Muslims, it does a disservice to everybody else in the country that wants to face reality. And the reality is 9-11 was a false flag operation. And Censor News, the new book is coming out. The new book is coming out on December 5th. I hope it's supposed to be delivered then. I hope to get copies of it to see what they show as the top 25. But in Censor News, the, the best stories of what they consider the top 25 stories of the year, each year from 2005 to 2011, Censored News had one of, the, one of the top 25 stories was what was being blacked out by the mainstream press on 9-11. Censored News, Project Censored, covered all the false flag, uh, the false information we were told, and they published the reality of what happened. And so our country, and until we, until we, uh, cut that poisonous tree off at the root and uproot it. 9-11 was a poisonous tree planted deep into the psyche of, of America. Uh, excuse and we're me, seeing excuse the poisonous me. You, you, excuse me, you talked about a disservice there. I think you're doing a massive disservice to all the people that worked in the FBI and the CIA and Homeland Security, etc., etc. You think 
that those people actually conspired to kill American citizens. That is a treasonous uh, opinion, and it's and it's and it's and it is and it does a immense uh, the, the disgrace to the people who. Do you think all of those people signed up for that? People, people have put their lives on the line. Hello, in your country, and you think that they would Kevin. willingly Kevin. kill American citizens to put to 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 be? I didn't say some, that, Kevin. Some polluted, Kevin. convoluted Kevin. political You're... agenda. Kevin. I think that is a tremendous slander on your own Kevin. people that were that would have put their lives on the line to 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 keep you safe. And the fact that they fucked up. People fuck up, right? You get over it. You got taken down by a guy. A few guys with buff daughters. You had you had a yeah. massive. You had a you had a security in airports that was laughable. Greece had a better security system when it comes to internal flights than you had, right? We in Europe we had massive security when you, when it comes to international flights. You had no security whatsoever in your flights. And you got taken down because you took your eye off the ball. Get over Kevin, it. Kevin. You say, Kevin. You say that the FBI and, and all those people conspired to kill thousands of American citizens is a massive slander. It is. You're right, Kevin. If I had said that, it would be a slander, but that's not what I said. You're listening to something totally different. What you're do you think you totally did? Well, you think they, 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 yes, all totally this, this all happened? This all happened without the FBI knowing and all this kind of. It was I a massive. Say, I didn't say, no, say sorry. Get over it. You got taken down, down by a bunch of fanatics with, with, with box cutters. We've had it in Europe. We've had we've had these guys in Europe. Uh, we've been bombings in Manchester and London, uh, and a guy uh, people have attacked uh, London with, with knives. All right. And, Fran and, and Paris with with guns. You know these guys. Are, these guys are about. Okay, Kelvin. We appreciate the opinion. I know we went down the rabbit hole a little bit. I'm. Uh, I'm so, sorry to my to grab you real okay, quick. I'm, I'm, I'm mute now. Oh, I know. I know. I know, Kelvin. Um, I'm going to close this evening out. I know it's about. 7.20, and I know it's about 8.22. We'll get out of here a little early tonight because of the uh, response of the audience. But I do want to close with the following. And I'm going to I'm gonna close out with what I'm going to talk about. Can you ask if um, there's any more comments, Tim? Is there any more comments? All right, Charlie, you want to say something? Go ahead. Well, it's simply that we're going to cover it on December the 9th, but it's a little difficult to claim the censorship when there's printed material available on the topic and under multiple titles, numerous and sundry videos on, on YouTube, none of which I believe have been taken down. There's been no expression of censorship by some, some of the leading conspiracy theorists on 9-11 like Jim Mars, um, and so forth. And right now, there are Facebook pages on conspiracy theories and black flag operations that anyone can post to, and all kinds of things. So it's a little difficult to claim that there's some censorship in progress on this topic. That's all. Okay. All right. You know, I think I'm going to close a little bit here tonight with a little bit from the Apostle Paul, who wrote several letters to Timothy, defining the role of a church leader. And it said, uh, he said basically this. Um, it's, the Bible refers to a leader as one above reproach. Like the husband, the have be the husband of one wife, be sober minded self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, non-violent, but gentle, and not a lover of money. Perhaps 
maybe we should think about that standard as to who we should have for president of the United States. I wish all of you a good night. And with that, I'm gonna stop the initial recording of the college. Thank you for coming. And I do wish all of you a very good